Hello and welcome to the Expressive Portrait, acrylic and mixed media painting with me, Stephen Lurson. Great, so to start off, we're just going to grab an 8x8 uh, artist panel. We need a photograph, and I just printed out a, a photograph of myself, kind of in a daydreaming uh, pose on standard paper, and then cut it to 8x8 and made sure that it fit. So once you have that, we're ready to get started. To apply the photograph, which is just standard paper, onto your artist panel, use a golden acrylic matte medium, and it should work perfectly. Whenever you're smoothing it out, go from the inside to the outside to ensure that there are no air bubbles underneath. And then once that dries, you're ready to go. Using gesso, Let's go ahead and paint out the background to give us a working area to make our paint. Sometimes, uh, to fill in smaller areas, you need to change brushes, and that way you have more control. In your painting, if you're going to create a bright background, then you'll want to use more than one coat of gesso. That way you give yourself a really nice uh, foundation underneath the yellows or oranges, and it'll be very nice. But in my case, I'm going to go with kind of a night sky colors, blues and purples. So I'm really not going to worry about doing too many coats. Because I'm painting the background first, and I wanted cool colors in the background to let the warm colors pop on top, I'm going to use a varieties of blues and purples, turquoise and teal, uh, in my first palette of paints. When you're ready to begin painting, Make sure that you are consistently dipping your paintbrush in the variety of colors. That way you get a nice variation in your background. And then not only change the colors, but change the brushes you use so that your mark making is varied. This all creates a much more dynamic surface. So I painted the table with browns, a variety of browns, ochre, um, copper colors, and I actually painted the chair out, and that's important. You should never feel limited or um, bound up by whatever your photograph is. Um, you're the artist and you can create it how you, however you want. So now I'm starting to have some fun. So the first step, which was just basically painting the background out, gave me my foundation that now I can create my dream, my expressive, imaginative things um, that turn this photograph into a painting. In a painting like this, it's going to require a number of ideas. So as you're juggling ideas, try to stay one step ahead of, of the painting. So while I'm painting the steam that turns into fog, that turns into a cloud, I'm also thinking, what next? What am I going to do next? So I have a ton of different options. As you can see, so far we have a cool, dark colored background and we have white clouds so I think that it's time to bring in some bright warm colors. One thing that's important to me that I have not said yet is that whenever I'm working in the same color family I don't wash my brush in between uh, colors so for instance whenever I painted the background of purples and blues I didn't wash my paint brush because they were going to blend anyway. Um, so whenever I'm just working with yellows and oranges, I don't wash my paintbrush then either. And that way I get more, uh, greater variety of colors because they're mixing not only in the brush, but also on the, on the panel. Anytime you're painting, you want to focus on some of the fundamentals of art. Contrast, for instance, helps your painting pop. And just for that reason, that's why I'm adding a lot of gray into the white of the cloud so that I can have dark areas and light areas. And that way, the hot air balloon will pop. I love Van Gogh's Starry Night, and, and he oftentimes uses blues and yellow or blue and orange color scheme. So because of that and that inspiration, I'm going to go ahead and paint in the clouds with a yellow gray. And what that's going to do is it's going to warm it up and also push it that much further away from the blue of the background. Right now, I'm pretty satisfied with the clouds, uh, but I only have two dream qualities. I have the steam turning into clouds, and then I have the hot air balloon. So I'm wanting to add one more element, an owl. 
Um, the scale doesn't necessarily have to be an issue because, once again, it's daydreaming. It's not really there. So I could have an owl that's as big as me or an owl that's half the size of the hot air balloon. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is use the same matte medium that we used to begin with and collage the owl into the painting. So it's no secret that one of the easiest ways to add a photographically correct detail into a painting is simply by collaging it in and then you can even paint on top of it. That's the whole concept of this painting uh, to begin with. So with that being said, whenever I watered an owl, I didn't necessarily take the time to draw one out and nor should you. You can um, print one out, cut it out, collage it in and then paint on top of it. And when the end product comes, when you're finished with the entire painting, um, you will have a painting of an owl or whatever it is you choose to have on your shoulder. Now that I'm painting the shirt, as you can see, it's really important to find the right brush for what you're trying to do. So for instance, with, with this, because I'm wearing a striped shirt uh, and I wanted to keep with those stripes, I made sure that I picked a brush that was the same width as a stripe and that way I didn't have to slow down and try to turn the brush sideways just to make it fit. Uh, I knew that it would fit and it freed me up to work with, with some speed. At this point, I'd like to go ahead and talk about the original photograph. Um, may have been having my own diva moment, but I did take quite a few. And the reason that it, I took enough was because I wanted to give myself a solid background with enough negative space or enough background space so that I could paint in exactly what I wanted to paint. So um, it wasn't just important that I got myself in it, but also had the right proportions of, of portrait to background. And then I resized the photograph on the computer to 8 inches by 8 inches and printed it out, and then I just had to cut it on a paper cutter to, to make it fit. So when you take your picture or when you find an old picture, make sure you include a good picture of yourself, but then also uh, have plenty of room so that you can paint in the background and other elements. When I'm, <laughs> when I'm painting the owl, I wanted to give it a nice personality, so I picked some carbon black, which I haven't used yet at all, um, for the eyes. And then after I painted the pupils, I'm going to bring back in with the little spot of highlight, and that's going to make the eyes finish. It's going to be pretty simple. And speaking of highlights, anytime you're doing highlights, whether it's on a, peep, on a person's eyes or an animal's eyes or um, anything like that, you want to make sure that the highlight spots of white are in the exact same position. For instance, if if we're talking about a clock and your highlight is at 11 o'clock on the left eye, make it at exact same position, 11 o'clock on the eye, in the right eye. Or if it's in another position, make sure it's the same. In that way, it'll give the illusion that both eyes are pointed in the same direction. That way you won't have any accidental cross-eyed or, or lazy eyes. <laughs> And now for the final step, I'm going to go ahead and use a stamp. And since it's kind of a painting about daydreaming, I'm going to have a stamp that says, Paint Your Dreams. 